Hi, I'm Jonathan Harvey, Head of Product Line Management for Nokia Core Networks. We're here at our annual Core User Group in Nokia's EC in Espo in Finland uh, with Mika Pippinen, uh, Elisa's Head of Telco Service Production. Welcome to our Nokia Core Talk. Elisa is known to be a market leader and first adopter of new technologies in Finland and Estonia with a focus on driving sustainable future through digitalization, which is obviously a key focus for us in Nokia as well. We're long-term strategic partners uh, in Volti, SDM, Radio, and lots of other network areas. Mika, welcome to Nokia Core Talk. Thank you, Jonathan. Mika, let's talk a bit about openness and cloudification. Um, what problems do you think it's going to solve? How do you think that's going to work for your customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, openness uh, in terms of uh, industry cooperation and APIs uh, uh, and, uh, and the cloudification are the key requirements for the efficient telco uh, automation. Uh, we started our telco cloudification journey back in 2016 uh, with the first generation telco cloud with the open stack and, and virtualized network uh, functions and 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 nowadays we are transferring and today we are transferring our our workloads and applications to to the containers and and kubernetes based based solutions yeah. uh, just to uh, improve our operational efficiency and simplify also the operations and and one very interesting option for us on our journey is the use of uh, hybrid clouds hyperscalers and hybrid, hybrid clouds uh, and, and how the hyperscaler can, can improve our operational efficiency and, and, and also quality. Quality uh, when we are deploying the, for example, uh, private 5G networks yep. or other, other network functions. So we have experienced uh, the whole, whole evolution of, of telco production from the legacy PNFs to, to VNFs and now going to the cloud native direction yeah. and, and containers. And I have to admit that this has been quite challenging journey. Yeah. Really, really um, services and networks uh, are, are getting even more complex. The complexity has increased a lot. And, and, and today we still need to do things manually in yeah. the network. So that is kind of challenge, big challenge for the operator, operator like, like us, Elisa. But anyway, when the cloud native ecosystem uh, is focusing more on telco applications uh, and, and how to automate the complete stack uh, and its life cycle, I believe we are, we are finally making progress. <coughs> and then it's good always to remember that eventually it's all about quality. Yep. It's all about the customer experience. All we need is the cloud infrastructure and, and the applications which we can uh, deploy and upgrade, increase capacity without any major uh, impact to the, to the end customer and, and end customer service. Okay, that's interesting. And you, t I mean, it's an interesting concept because you, you talk about hybrid clouds, mm -hmm. sort of combined private and public cloud. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you see that working? What do you see that's going to give your customers? Customers, yeah. Um, for telco services, uh, we have been uh, focusing the private clouds, and in order to in order to meet the regulatory uh, requirements, yeah. and and uh, for non-telco and IT services, we have used uh, hybrid clouds and hyperscalers for for many years already. Already, and um, I don't have to be honest. I don't have a clear clear answer to you uh, to, to the hybrid cloud and, and, and how to utilize the hybrid clouds in telco domain. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting opportunity, especially for the enterprise use cases, yeah. where you can combine the hyperscalers um, uh, flexible solution to the on-prem private cloud solution uh, in order to deploy, for example, the 5G. <coughs> 5G private networks for the end customers. They're so sort of pushing the UPF out to the Yeah, 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 something like, yeah, uh, exactly. Cloud yeah, networks. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, we are very keen on experimenting and, and we are constantly experimenting in Elisa um, the use of hyperscalers. How, how the hyperscaler can, can um, 
increase or, or improve our improve, improve our operational efficiency and, and, and the quality and also how the operational models responsibilities and processes uh, should change and what kind of processes we should have in place in order to run that kind of operational yeah. model yeah interesting yeah yeah so Jonathan uh, what about you uh, what, what about our, what about your approach in Nokia uh, to private and public and hybrid clouds yeah it's an interesting one so I mean if, if I look at the whole market you know globally right now we're seeing a sort of proliferation of different cloud platforms different sort of deployment models mm -hmm. and everything and um, yeah, so we're seeing, you know, the traditional private single stack model, which, you know, is still the bulk of our business, I would say. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're trying to approach this from a, from a, from a very sort of open, multi-cloud sort of scenario. So we, we support our own cloud stack, which is obviously private cloud. But we're also supporting sort of third-party platforms, you know, things like VMware and Red Hat. Yeah. But now, of course, along come the hyperscalers. And uh, the same as you, you know, we're sort of... We're seeing how this is going to play, mm -hmm. how this is going to affect, you know, uh, how we deploy. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, an interesting model is, of course, you know, that we deploy our standard 5 GSA core yeah. on a private cloud, on-prem, you know, business as usual for the telcos in some ways. Mm -hmm. But then when we want to slice, when we want to get out to the edge and everything, mm -hmm. we start leveraging the footprint, you know, the data center footprint and the sort of zones all of the hyperscalers have. So for us, it's all about multi-cloud, you know, yeah. being able to support as many as possible, mm -hmm. which sort of means all the platforms have to be cloud native. Yeah. You know, we can't have this situation where we're locked into a specific platform. Um, and and also, you know, that you can move the various network functions around, you know, mm -hmm. so you've got to have this disaggregation. Uh, and also it's the openness side of things. Yeah. You know, I have no clue what you're going to ask me for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I need to be able to support it, basically. <laughs> So Jonathan, um, as you know in Elisa, uh, we focus on driving operational efficiency. Yeah. And how does Nokia support improving operational efficiency in this cloud native era for operators like Elisa? That's yeah, a good question. And um, I, if I look at the user group today, you know, I mean, that's what all the discussion is about. I mean, if I could put one word around it, all it's automation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for us, it's I suppose I could split it into three main areas: sort of automation openness simplicity on the automation yeah. side of things it's you know being able to leverage the tools which we have at hand you know there's mm -hmm. a lot of sort of tools available in in the cloud native uh, environment but it's automating them it's it's getting us down to this sort of i was going to say zero touch but let's not go too far so this is almost like one click model you know where we've we we've got lifecycle management very very automated. We've got CI/CD deployed so that we can be bringing new software updates in, in an extremely automated way. And I think you're right in your first point around the fact that you know we've moved through the various generations of cloud, mm -hmm. and it's just got more complex. Yeah. You know that was not how it was meant to be. You know I mean we all believe the hype a bit too much, and now we've got to really fix it. Mm -hmm. And automation is absolutely key. For us, of course, also we know that you don't necessarily just select Nokia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be nice. Uh, but so we've got to be open, you know, so we've got to be able to work with lots of other network functions, potentially other management platforms, other CI, CD pipelines, mm -hmm. this type of thing. Um, and then the final thing is simplicity, which to be honest, sort of wraps up the automation anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think, but you know, for me, it's all about automation right now. That's yeah. absolutely key. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're having to put a lot of sort of effort into that now because people are fed up waiting for it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, let me turn it around. I mean, so how's Elisa's view on, on sort of the whole sort of um, automation side of things and, and, and sort of cloud native management? And I, I suppose, the, you know, the next step, how do you see like the, the SaaS model as well, mm -hmm. you know, the software as a service model? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to mention the zero dads, but but eventually, <laughs> exactly. zero dads should be the target. Yeah. We are not there yet, uh, and we are in the very early stages at the, at the moment. And, and not, I think that right now the industry is taking the very very first steps uh, in automation uh, at different levels of the cloud. Uh, infrastructure, uh, networking, and, and applications, tenants. 
then I'll say that a lot has been done in, in, in the initial provisioning or initial uh, installation of the application uh, on cloud. Yep. But less uh, effort is put on, on, on the automating automation of the complete end-to-end -end life cycle. Yeah. And that is again a big <coughs> challenge for us for the operator who really needs to operate and run the networks in daily basis and, and do all those uh, activities and handle all those activities pretty much manually yeah. today. Yeah. Then you <laughs> had a question about uh, as a service model. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a really, really interesting opportunity because uh, we see that actually that is, that is um, an evolution to the hi uh, hybrid cloud solution. So, um, as a service uh, deployments uh, could be utilized for applications uh, and functions where the speed and agility is required, and, and then the regulation is not a prohibiting factor. And, and as, as I told you earlier, the, the managing the life cycle of the deployment can be very complex, and yeah. it is complex today. And typically, that is left to the operators nowadays. So, so uh, we are acting as an integrators. But in the SaaS deployments or as a service deployments, that responsibility, in my opinion, is turned around. So, so actually, the uh, as a service provider is respons responsible for, for the integrator yeah. part of the deployment. Yeah, yeah it's interesting, and it, it sort of ties for us. You know, if I go back to the automation side of things, you know, the as a service model, you know, it effectively to make that work, it's got to be completely automated. Yeah. So we're is. we're seeing a model where you know our first as a service solutions, mm -hmm. which are you know aimed at things like trials and POCs and mm -hmm. MPNEs and yeah, stuff, yeah. will pull through the automation to everything yeah, else. Yeah. So it's sort of it's accelerating yeah, the automation yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. yeah and a, a software as a service or a, as a service model, th that actually the pressure to automate everything is is on the um, as a service provider provider side. Yeah. 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 I think we're on the yeah. same page there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The obvious question, <laughs> why Nokia? You know, why, why do you guys work with Nokia? And, and I suppose I've got a little sub-question, you know, uh, can you talk a little bit about your experiences with Nokia Arena? Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, Jonathan, uh, Elisa is celebrating uh, its 140-year uh, birthday, actually, this month. Okay. And, and we have a very long history with, with Nokia, uh, with Nokia starting from, from uh, the PSTN networks. And, and Nokia is one of our key technology partners, and, and we have been jointly piloting new technologies for decades already, starting from, for example, uh, from the world's first uh, GSM call in the commercial networks provided by, by uh, Nokia, and coming to the present day, and the record-breaking 5G uplink speed of 2.1 gigs <laughs> in at, at, at Nokia Arena in, in the city of uh, Tampere. So uh, we highly, highly value Nokia's innovative approach uh, to develop new solutions and uh, services and the participation in, in open source ecosystems driving the cloud native approach and, and automation forward. And then last but not least, it's always a pleasure to work with a Finnish company in Finland. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, and it goes back the other way as well. I mean, you know, we, we rely on yourselves to sort of push us, to innovate, you know, yeah. and it, it's a joint innovation, it's yeah, a partnership. Yeah, so yeah exactly, exactly. Thank you for your yeah. partnership. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So Mika, thanks for joining me for this discussion. I'm looking forward to our continued cooperation and more discussions in the user group as well. Um, thank you, everyone. This concludes our session. Thanks for joining us.